Hello everyone, today I'm going to explain the differences between bases and nucleophiles. The first thing you should know is that bases and nucleophiles are exactly the same molecules or compounds and in most cases they have the same order of reactivity. That means the same molecule which is a strong base is a strong nucleophile except for some cases that we will see during this lecture. So if they are the same molecules, why we call them sometimes bases and other times nucleophile? It depends on their role during the reaction. In order to simplify this idea, let's talk about John, for example. John is the teacher, so at school his students call him teacher, but at home his children call him father. So John has different names depending on his position or his role in the society. John in chemistry is a species which is able to donate a pair of electrons to another species in order to form a new covalent bond. When this donation is offered to a carbon, so it is called a nucleophile. And when this donation is offered to a hydrogen, like proton, we call it a base. Let's see now what makes molecule a base or a nucleophile. The only condition for a species to be a base or a nucleophile is to have a long pair of electrons, like methanol, methoxy group, water, hydroxide anion, ammonia, amide ion, fluorine ion, and all halogen ions. As we can see, all of them have one or more lone pair of electrons, so they are molecules rich in electrons, and they can react with molecules which have an atom poor in electrons, like acid or electrophile. Watch my video as in two reaction mechanism for more details. What are the factors that make a good base or a good nucleophile? The role of charge. Remember that we are talking about a species that is donating a pair of electrons. It is reasonable to expect that its ability to donate electrons will increase as it becomes more electron rich, right? So negatively charged species are better base and better nucleophile than neutral species. Electronegativity and size. The comparison that we made before was between two molecules with the same reactive atom, such as oxygen. But what if we want to compare between two molecules with different reactive atoms like oxygen and nitrogen? In this case, two factors should be taken into account, the electronegativity and the size of the reactive atom. Now assuming that we have those four charged molecules, first thing we have to remember that the four reactive charged atoms belong to the same row of the periodic table and has almost the same atomic size, which means that the size has no effect on their reactivities. The only factor that changes between them is the electronegativity. F is the most electronegative and C is the less electronegative. Remember that electronegativity describes the tendency of an atom to attract or hold electrons toward itself. So F, which is the most electronegative atom in this group, would better hold its negative charge and its ability to donate its electrons would be low. So F is the weakest nucleophile or base among those molecules. Carbon, on the other hand, is the least electronegative atom in this group and then it cannot hold its negative charge at all and its ability to donate its electrons is very high. So carbon is the best nucleophile and base among base molecules. Bottom line, as electronegativity increases, nucleophilicity and basicity decreases. But what if we want to compare between molecules with different sizes, like halogens? Let's remember that halogens belong to the same column in the periodic table and their size increases moving up to down. In this case, the difference of size will change the order of reactivity of nucleophilicity and basicity and will no longer be aligned. 
Let's start with basicity. All those species have a negative charge, which means one extra electron in their outer shell electron. When the size of charged species changes, the role of size becomes much more important than the electronegativity, which means the larger the species is, the better its negative charge will be dispersed and the better this species will bear this negative charge. Hence, its ability to donate its electron will be low. So, fluorine ion, which is the most electronegative atom, is too small to well disperse its negative charge. And its negative charge is too concentrated and wants to react as soon as possible. So, it is the best acid. Iodine ion, which is the weakest electronegative atom, is too large and its negative charge is dispersed very well and is lost in space, so it is the weakest acid. The basicity of this group of species is as following. But when we talk about nucleophilicity, the order of reactivity will be inverted. The largest atom becomes the best nucleophile, even though it is the weakest base which means iodine ion becomes the best nucleophile and fluorine ion will be the weakest one. To explain this phenomenon, let's have a look at the next figure. Remember that an electron-rich species is called nucleophile when it reacts with the carbon. Because iodine ion is the largest species, it makes it a polarizable nucleophile and it's easier for it to overlap with the orbital of carbon resulting in a greater degree of bonding with the carbon in the transition state, which makes up for its decreased basicity and makes it the strongest nucleophile. Fluorine ion, on the other hand, is too small, and the bond formed with the carbon is too little, so it becomes the weakest nucleophile. The nucleophilicity for this group of species is as following. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you benefited and enjoyed it. Subscribe to see my coming videos in case you have any further questions or suggestions. Don't hesitate to send me an email.